Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Well, it's testing day for me again. I get the chance to test the new Cobra Red Speed Irons. So for today's test, I'm going to hit the pitching wedge, the seven iron, and the five iron. We're gonna take a look at some numbers and compare the differences. We're also gonna talk tech with the models as well. So we're gonna talk about the tech, we're gonna talk about the extreme heel and toe weighting. We're gonna talk about the tune rad weighting. We're gonna talk about the forged power shell face. And we're gonna talk about the 3D printed medallion. So as I'm hitting these shots, I'm gonna talk about the differences with the new Cobra Rad Speed irons. And I'm really excited to see how they kind of compare to Cobra's previous models here as well. So it's gonna be an exciting test. I do expect that the distances with these are gonna be pretty strong. So the pitching wedge lofts 42.5 degrees. The seven iron loft is 27.5. And the five iron loft is 21 degrees. So these are definitely a little stronger lofted irons. So I will expect with the extreme heel and toe weighting and the stronger lofted clubs that these are gonna probably generate some high ball speed. They gonna generate some lower spin rates but also forgiveness across the entire club face as well. So I'm gonna hit some shots, compare the numbers with each, each iron. I'm excited to do that. Before I do that, I do ask if you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got plenty more other great content coming your way in the future. Let's get after it. I'm going to start out with the rad speed pitching wedge. As I mentioned, 42.5 degrees aloft. I do expect this might carry over 150 right off the bat. So I'm excited to see the distances and talk about the tech on the irons. So first thing I noticed when I was hitting the pitching wedge compared to the seven iron and the five iron is I'm looking at the top line. So the top line with the seven iron and the five iron, it's got that, that graphite where they're able to reposition the weight around on, on the club. Now the pitching wedge is a club where you don't need quite as much forgiveness. You're trying to kind of work the ball into the flag a little bit more. So it doesn't have the, uh, the graphite up the top of, up on the top line there either. Now speaking of top lines, it's not the largest top line I've ever seen, but it's not the smallest either. So it's definitely a good looking game improvement club to look down at. Definitely a little bit of offset looking, looking down at compared to more of a, a player's iron. But I did like the fact that I could work the ball with it. So we look here, I like to play a tiny little drawer. So we notice those five white dots, how close they are together. So very, very consistent every, every single time was able to draw the little ball a little bit, so workability is still in these game improvement irons here as well. Consistency was also pretty good across the face. My ball speed was, with the exception of one that I slightly miss it, the ball speed was basically 115 every single time. If we look at uh, the spin rate, we're looking around about 7,000 RPMs of spin. So kind of talking tech with the irons a little bit, so the extreme heel and toe weighting. So there is 10 grams of weight that goes in the toe and about three grams of weight that goes in the heel. What that does is that reduces the spin on the club a little bit. I'm already a relatively low spin iron player. So I would be worried a little bit about this if I was to play these irons, for those, but for those players that deliver the club a little bit steeper, that need to get the spin rate down to pick up a little bit of distance, this would be a great option. So I just noticed right off the bat, the spin rate a little bit on the lower side. I did draw the ball a little bit, but definitely slightly kind of on the lower side there because it's designed to spin just a little bit less. Uh, if we look at the carry distance, I believe it was around about 155, 154.5. We're talking very, very consistent with regards to carry distance, which is exactly what I want out of my wedge because that is my scoring club. I wanna make sure it does the same thing every single time. So we had a range from 152.7 to 156.1, which is very, very important. So pitching wedge is done. I'm excited to hit the seven iron now. I do expect this to spin 
Once again, a little bit on, on the lower side. It's got 27 and a half degrees of loft on it. So I will expect some numbers over 200 yards with carry distance. So I mentioned with the extreme toe and heel weighting, the 10 gram and the 3 gram weight. So the 10 gram tune red weighting, what that does is it does help with stability and to generate some really high ball speed numbers and a little bit lower spin across the face. So we can definitely notice when I was hitting the 7 iron how high the ball speed numbers were. We're talking pushing very close to 140. It was about 138 to 139 every single time, which shows the stability across the club face. Now I am a, definitely a better golfer um, than a lot of players that fit into this model here too, but I will say that you will get some consistency on your off-center hits with this club across the board there as well. It may not look like it, but I did have a couple that didn't feel like I quite caught it on the middle of the club face but the consistency was right there right across the face there as, as well. So speaking on numbers, 7 iron, 138.9 carry distance. Spin rate, because this club's designed to spin a little bit less, was 43, 44. Now that's to do with the design with the heel and toe weighting, but also due to the loft, because the loft's got 27 and a half degrees of loft on it. Naturally, it is going to spin less. Um, the spin consistency, impressed me because a lot of times when I hit a game improvement iron I would notice when I get high ball speeds and low spin that the inconsistencies can show up. Well if we look here with these five shots when I have a consistency number of less than a hundred so basically 4300 to 4400 every single time that is very important to note so spin consistency is, def consistency is definitely key and that's why the ball carried the same distance pretty much across the tire numbers right across the board. We'll notice 213.4 up to 216.2. So we're talking a three yard difference on a club that is, for me, when I was hitting this, was carrying 215 yards. So that is the most important takeaway with, with this. Now, yes, we do not always all about distance but it is important to have consistency. So consistency across the board, it was just an added bonus that for players that need a little help to get the ball to go a little further, maybe those players that spin the ball more than they should, maybe those players that slice the ball a little bit and cut across it or have a steeper attack angle, definitely a good option for sure. Uh, the height when I was hitting it, it was about 120 feet in the air. When I was hitting the pitching wedge, it was about 120 feet in the air, so nice consistent height across the board there too. So one other thing I did want to touch on is workability. When I was in the seven iron, I drew the ball every single time. Normally when I play a game improvement iron, I notice the ball tends to be harder for me to draw. But when I hit this one, we'll notice it had a kind of slight little right to left curve on it every single time, which is a ball flight that you all know that I love to see. So now I've got the 5-iron. As I pick up the 5-iron, I do want to just touch on the 3D printed medallion. So on the back, we can notice there's some 3D print, printing going on here. It's really kind of unique. What this does is it really saves weight on the club and allows you to make a little more lighter club head to generate some more club speed, to generate some more ball speed, and some more distance across the face here. But not only generate distance, but also feel good off the club face as well. Yikes, what a miss it. That definitely did not feel like a very good swing. But I would, I would take that for a, for a miss hit. We'll notice that my spin rate on that dropped quite significantly and the height dropped significantly. But how straight that was. That was, that was really impressive. I, that was definitely not one of my better swings that you'll see on camera.
That was a much better swing. That was a better swing too. Okay, five iron numbers. I will tell you these were probably the worst five swings that I had made on camera in a row. Um, so we can definitely sell, see some fluctuations with regards to ball speed numbers and, and spin rate numbers here too. But I wanted to leave them up because a lot of players, they would kind of fit into that category where they, they're going to have some miss hits in there. They're going to have some off-center hits. So I just want to talk about the forgiveness with this particular model across the face. So speaking of the fluctuations, you'll notice that my ball speed, I had one that was 139.3 and one that was 148.6. So I had a fairly, fairly wide range. When a club gets longer, it does become harder to hit. So I'm not surprised by that. Those were just a couple of bad swings by me. We'll notice also when my off-center hits that the spin rate fluctuation was there. So notice how we can see a range from 22.99 to 24, then 39, then 4,400. So that was me across the board making a couple of bad swings. But I want to talk about the consistency on carry distance. Now we're talking about a club that is carrying very close to 230 yards, but the consistency was pretty good. We'll notice that we have a range from 226 to 232. So for how bad I was hitting those five swings, what really impressed me was the carry consistency across the board there as well. So carry distance with an iron is very, very important, not so much the total distance. So carry distance for sure, consistency across the board, can notice that the height fluctuation changed when I miss hit it. You'll notice there's two there where my height was under 80 feet in the air, and then I had two there that were about 120 feet in the air as well. So average was around 100 feet, but they weren't my best swings. But the level of forgiveness with this model here is important to touch on. Very, very important stuff to kind of talk, talk about with regards to level forgiveness across the entire club face, the way this club's designed, it helped me out a lot when I missed some shots. So also important is dispersion. So we'll notice I actually had four really close together there with regards to dispersion. And then I had the one that I pulled over to the left there. So consistency, talking about that carry distance with regards to consistency, the ball that's going 230 yards, very, very impressive. So. I know my numbers really, really well with my clubs. The other great thing that comes with Cobra, all Cobra equipment these days, is the Cobra Connect. So Cobra has partnered with Arcos. So Cobra Connect, I've been using Arcos and Cobra Connect grips in 2020 myself. And you will be able to understand and analyze your distance numbers you could probably submit them to your fitter, you could submit them to your coach and work back and forth to really see what parts of your game need work. Not only does it have a built-in GPS system on, for, on your phone to know how far golf courses play, but it also has a very in-depth analytics system there that you can analyze your, your golf, golf clubs out with. So Cobra Connect comes with a free 90-day trial period when you purchase Cobra equipment there too. So highly recommend Cobra Connect. So if the numbers are off in, on your scorecard or if they're off when you're analyzing your data, whether you're using Cobra Connect or not, make sure to come in and get fit with a fitter in our stores or online at secondswing.com. Not only will we give you a great experience, but we do also take trades as well. So make sure you bring your clubs in to trade them in. Thanks for watching this video. We've got plenty more stuff coming your way in the future.